All right, guys, welcome back to stream number seven, episode number 19 of my Talos Principle 2 Let's Play. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, last time out, we got, I guess you could call it officially, to the halfway point, I think. We are uh, now at 50% completion on uh, all the puzzles, all of the hidden labs, all of the... Um, Star puzzles, I think that was called. Cool. Of course, that doesn't take into account all of the extra puzzles in all of the areas behind the gold gates, but we're not going to be able to get those until we have cleared 100% of the story puzzles, I guess. They're going to be kind of like bonus puzzles at the end. If you remember last time out, though, we were returned to New Jerusalem and we was on our text-based adventure before we headed off to go and see Cornelius. And um, LB let me know that we uh doing the first one wouldn't count because we sort of quit out the game so before i started the stream i have as you can see um gone through the uh, ghost of atlantis so we don't have to uh, sit through that again on stream so yeah for once knock was prepared it's a christmas miracle so um yes all right, Deathwish. No worries. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi there, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, so let us do Argument Simulator by Guta. Short, punchy work of games as commentary. Do you agree with the conclusion it suggests? Let's find out. Welcome to Argument Simulator. Let's look at the credits first, I guess. Uh, just as well, before I jump in too far, um, glad to hear that your uh, ribs are getting better, Furious. Is that all the credits are? Just written and designed by Guta. That's it. Okay. All right, let's begin. Choose your character. So we've got Old Boom, Socrates, or the Life Library Assistant. Let's go for Gold Boom. Choose your argument. It's true, it's false, it's not true. Well, if it's not true, it's false, right? It's going to be one or the other. Um, it's true. I disagree. Um, you're wrong. No, you are. I can contradict you. I don't accept the underlying logic of your contradiction. Um, what have we walked in on here <laughs> excuse me got a bit of a cough tonight as well my throat's not doing too good so i apologize if i sound a bit uh, croaky um let's find out what we agree on okay it feels like a good idea for us to understand one another better game over thank you for playing argument simulator okay so basically if you agree the game is over. It's not true. I assert the opposite. This is obviously incorrect. I feel like I question your axiomatic principles. I feel like it's possibly the same questions and the same kind of responses for all of it. Your question begs your assertion. Foundations you're thinking are incorrect. That's the opposite of the truth. You're wrong. No, you are. <laughs> okay. And then we're just going to go around in a loop. I question your metaphysics. Clearly. Your side will never be right. Yeah, we're just kind of stuck in a loop now. Unless there is a different answer where we can actually win the argument. I wonder. I think we've done a question your ethics, have we? 
I guess we have. All right, well. I wonder if it's the same for every character. Let's try Socrates. Yeah, I think it, it is. Don't you come in here with your arguments, Team Spen? How dare you? <laughs> All right, so yeah, it doesn't. It seems like it doesn't matter what character you pick here. Um, it's the same loop. Okay, so we've got Jefferson Goldblum, who we remember from the uh, Road to Gehenna, and the Spectre of Moderni Modernity by Rat. Another story in the much-celebrated Jefferson Goldblum shared universe originating in Gehenna, it maintains the characteristic writing style of the series but focuses on a new set of themes. Uh, I do not. Death, um, LB, I do not at all. I'll be honest. My memory is like a sieve. True story. Written and desired by Rat, but dedicated to Mac. I remember Mac being one of the writers from Gehenna. Okay. <clears throat> you, Jefferson Goldblum, go gold boom. Deftly step out of your charging pod and walk into the main lobby of Goldblum. Gold boom institute. I, I want to say Goldblum, as in Jeff Goldblum. Um. Which I think, like, this character is like a play on that kind of play on words because it comes up in the original game, but it's Jefferson Gold Boom. It is a humble abode filled with a small four seater sofa, a table, a coffee bar, and an arboretum. Ginny HD, your fiance, is, le is the leading member of the Aserati Weiserstrass Jazz Ensemble. Reach you from the sofa while Frankie Soy Sauce waves from the coffee bar, and the Velociraptor John Malcolm drives out of the Arboretum on his motorcycle wearing his green armored t shirt. John Malcolm. It's like John Hammond and Ian Malcolm. Ian, yeah. Anyway. Um, let's speak to Ginny. Oh, Jefferson, cries Ginny HD. Good morning. Good morning, Ginny HD, you reply. Did you sleep well, my darling? Oh, Jefferson, I felt slept most dreadfully. Why is that? Is your charging pod too hard? No, Jefferson, that's not it at all. Ginny HD mourns. My charging pod is very comfortable. I don't know why I slept so poorly, but I woke up on this small four-seater sofa, which is strange because I went to sleep in my room. You think about this carefully while stroking your guitar. Ginny HD has no problem recharging most nights. You are about to re replay when a klaxon re resounds throughout the Gold, Bo Gold Boom Institute. Um, let's ask John Malcolm what's happening. Chirp, chirp, chirps. Chirp, 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 chirps. John Malcolm loudly before he shrugs his rep reptilian shoulders. Sorry, my friend, I'm afraid this saying doesn't translate very well. Maybe you should shut the klaxon off before we continue this conversation. Um, I'm going to shoot the klaxon with, though. As much as that's a cool answer. You walk over to the computer terminal and attempt to shut down the klaxon, but the machine refuses to accept your command with the, without the correct password. John Malcolm revs up his motorcycle, a sure sign that he is deeply worried. Jefferson, you have to do something about this noise, he calls. Um, let's play my guitar. You unsling your guitar from your back and check the strings to make sure they are all they are all there in the proper order. I love like these stories, how they kind of like perceive things. Like you, you check that the strings are in the proper order because everybody takes their strings off the guitars, right? Then you take a heroic stance with your chest puffed out, your legs splayed wide, and your guitar held heroically aloft. You play a chord, a perfect chord, followed by another equally perfect chord, and another, and another. As always, all the chords that you play are perfect. This is your greatest burden. Mollified, the klaxon shuts itself off. You turn to the you turn from the now silent central computer console and look at your team who are all gazing back 
at you with varying levels of wonderment in their eyes. John Malcolm dismounts his motorbike with an air of certainty and queries the central computer console with sure taps of his reptilian claws upon the keyboard. It seems, John Malcolm says, that the sense of a detected threat of galactic magnitude. Oh no, cries Ginny HD with Frankie Soy Sauce, drops his cup of, cup of joe in the no in drops his cup of joe in fear. Um what the th is the threat? Shudder goes through John Malcolm's magnificent pl plumage. Plumage. Something far more dangerous than anything we have encountered so far, Jefferson, he proclaims. Oh, John Malcolm, what is it? exclaims Ginny HD. What could it possibly be? We have already defeated the dastardly Dr. E. Elian. What could, what could be more dangerous than him? This time, my friends, John Malcolm says after a pause of precisely 2.5 seconds, we will be up against the spectre of modern modernity. Um, ask what the specter is. What is the specter of modernity, you ask? While well, turning your guitar, turning by tuning your guitar for the coming battle. I'm glad that you asked, answered John Malcolm. As you all well know, for I have told this tale many times, my people have feared for many millennia that this day would come. John Malcolm smooths the feathers along his long neck with his claws. Scepter, as you also know, will bring an bring an end to the old and ring in a new era of unparalleled technology, te technological advancements until there is no space left in our world for such cherished human and dinosaurian qualities like love, creativity, the ability to taste a man, a mammy, a mammy, loyalty and, friend, loyalty and friendship. Circle of renewal will end and we will only move forward at an ever accelerating pace until we reach the limits of existence ourselves. Um, when will it arrive? Except it travels at the speed of time itself, says John Malcolm gravely. It has already arrived, Jefferson. We just haven't encountered it yet. Frankie Sawyer Sauce talks, turns from the coffee maker, a fresh couple of battery acid clutched carefully in his human fingers. <laughs> the human was drinking battery acid? Yikes. We must do something, Jefferson. I do not care for the mommy. Set to takes away the ability to taste coffee. I don't know whatever I will do. All tastes are precious to us, Frankie. You say, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and yes, also umami. We shan't surrender any of them, for they are what renders us, renders us as human. All right, we'll take action. Yeah, that's what I kind of like like about reading like the as I said about like the the whole guitar thing about like the. Making sure the strings are in the correct order, as if you like you take the strings off a guitar every time you finish you like playing it. Friends, humans, dinosaurs, countrymen, possessed by a sudden urge to act, you jump on the, on the coffee maker, much to Frankie Soyasaur's dismay. We cannot let this threat to our very way of life go unanswered. No, we must stand against this scepter and not yield until we are victorious. Will you stand with me? Yes, my darling. Anything for hu anything for human world, cries Ginny HD. Friend, you know that I will stand by you until the bitter end, as John Malcolm solemnly. For coffee, shouts Frankie Soy Sauce, and for love. But asks Ginny HD, after the shouting and swearing of the fealty is done, how will we prevail? Such a modernity is too powerful for you to fight on its own. Of course, she is right, as she usually is. One of the taste sensors that gives savory characters to the food. Okay, didn't know that. Thank you for the info, Papyrus. Um, okay, who are we going to take with us? I want to take John. Ah, Jefferson. I am honored that you would choose me as your companion on this quest, John Malcolm says, flapping his flightless spare sparsely feathered arms in gratitude. Together we defeat the Scepter of Modernity and our adventures will, lead, will live on in song for generations to come. Tell me, friend Jennison, where shall I take us on our motorcycle? Um, Let's just go and confront the Scepter, right? When you approach the lair of the Scepter of Modernity, you decide to leave your companion behind, knowing that you cannot risk another life in this final confrontation. 
Sometimes heroes have to stand alone. Enter the mechanical lair. Inside the mechanical lair, the scepter of modernity waits for you, sitting translucently on a titanium throne. The scepter of modernity, you murmur through the gritted teeth. We meet at last. You are mistaken, Professor Doc. Professor Dr. Coldboom, the said the scepter of modernity says. We have met many times before. I am your father and your mother. Um, clarification, please. Who do you think inspired you to add the power of electricity to your guitar? Who upgraded Ginny from SD to HD? Who indeed deciphered the mathematical secrets of the chords, the arcane knowledge upon which some of your greatest adventures depend? I was your ally all along. Jefferson, the foul wizard of crime has conspired to turn you against me. It was he who enchanted your klaxon. Um, hmm. I mean, again, doesn't really clarify the fact that you are my father and my mother. So let's attack. Scepter of Modernity laughs. Foolish human, you cannot defeat me. I shall conquer you and drag human world and the ninth dimension into the future, kicking and screaming. All that is holy will be profaned. And there will be a pro there will be progress if it is the last thing I do. I think, you say coolly, that's the last thing you should do. The, the last thing you should do is die. I look out uselessly. Want to pull out the guitar? You cannot stand against me, foolish human, the scepter says with another laugh. All the powers you have ever had were my gifts to you, even your precious guitar. And with that, it squishes you like an ant. The human world of the ninth dimension went are doomed to an eternal forward march until they finally, until finally all that is solid melts into the air. Game over. No! So I'm just meant to kind of accept that they're my father? Do you want to go for another run through it, or shall we move on? I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to have another go at it. All right, let's have another go. I'm only going to rush through it a little bit again, though. Um, so I'm going to kind of pick the same kind of options I did before, but I'm going to like mix it up a bit towards the end. Why was the klaxon blaring? Oh, I'm gonna take John again. It's fair, we could have probably just like gone on our own because um yeah, we kind of like we're leaving uh, John outside of the lair anyway. So, all right. So, what's going on, Mr. Fab? How you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're keeping well. Um. Okay. So, let's request clarification. So this time we're going to say this actually makes a lot of sense. Sorry. No biggie, says the spectre. Now let us defeat the world, the wizard of crime together. Even now he conspires to seal all that you have accomplished with the power of his enchant enchantments. The power of his enchantments that confuse the mind. The, uh... It's not late, Mr. Fab. It's first stream of the year, so uh, you are not late in the slightest. You rush back to the Gold, gold Boom in Institute, where you find the Wizard of Crime taking advantage of your absence of your heroic friends. Out seeking other ways to stop the Spectrum Melanie to rifle through your belongings. He is surprised to see you. I see my scheme has failed. Curses! Were it not for that scheming Spectre, I would have stolen all your wealth and added it to my ever-growing hoard. For that, for that is my scheme. To steal and steal until the whole world is mine. Mwahaha! 
And so you arrest Bal Sorcerer instead of the development of human potential and become good friends with the Sector of Modern Entity. Just call me Mo, suspect the Spectre says. I'm sure we'll have many wonderful adventures together. The end. Hey, there we go. We met Mo. All right, cool. We are now done with the Gehenna um, exhibition. And I guess time to go and catch up with Cornelius. Unless there is anybody else to have a chat with. Oh. I mean, what's the point of the barrier exactly? We deserve a functional city. Public transportation must be safe. Oh, yikes, Ellie. <laughs> Welcome back, 1K. Sorry, can't let you through. We're on strike. Yesterday, there was a sudden brownout in the grid, and we almost had a derailment. We've been warning the mayor for months, and all he ever gives us is waffle about the goal. This can't go on. Um. Um, I mean, that's fair enough that they're like standing up for what they feel is right. And I agree with them, but you see, the answers are really, really weird. Um... Why can't we answer? I agree with you, but I, I, but the city needs stability right now, so call off the strike, kind of thing. Everything's kind of like you're either all in, you're all out, or you're a bit of both. Um, strike it. I mean, I agree, but your methods are wrong. It's kind of saying that nobody should be able to protest and stand up for what they believe in. So I don't think that's like the way I would go. Um. I'm just gonna say I don't want to get involved because that's kind of saying I don't agree with you, I don't disagree with you, but I kind of feel like there's bigger things going on right now at the minute. So, yeah. You were involved the moment you were born, 1K. <laughs> I heard it 15 times when he was practicing it. I think Atal, like many of us, feels that the time for change is long overdue. The technology you uncovered on the island is the final catalyst for that change, or it should be. I mean, again, I don't really know what they're blocking us from going through. Anything that's changed? Okay, I'll go and... Uh... We're gonna have a quick look then before we head off to uh, speak to Cornelius. Hey, one. Good luck. Okay. Hello, new one. Are you browsing or buying? Are you browsing or buying? Or what are you selling? The kind that trades in hopes and dreams. Oh, Yours wow. for the right price. Is there something your heart desires? Um, maybe later. I'll type of that now. <laughs> hopes and dreams. Game never clicked with you, uh, Mr. Fab. I mean, fair enough. Are you enjoying our gardens? I mean, they just kind of look like grass to me, but sure, they're lovely. All the great secrets are right there, you know. 
You can watch the tiniest of seedlings grow, flourish, and die. But it's the pattern of all things that you're really seeing. Um... I suspect we see the world through quite different lenses. Sometimes I imagine myself as an old oak tree. I watch the life which grows around me. I see the ivy, the moss, the fungi, leaching my nutrients as they go. And I don't blame them. I'm delighted by how life seems so different from me can somehow be the same as me. This old oak tree drinks water from the ground. They drink their water from me. They shrivel and die in a single season. But I shrivel and die over centuries. What kind of plant would you be, I wonder? Um... What do you think? I think you must be a rose bush or a cactus of some sort. You're spiky. You thrive in specific conditions, unparalleled in your habitat. But the slightest variation, and you'll be dead in a week. Wow. I'm more of a... Root vegetable. Uh, so you're modest? and robust. You're clearly interested in our ancestors' rituals of utility. But that's exactly what I thought you were. You see, these patterns, they flow through all of us the same. Yet they always come out different. Thank you for stopping by, 1K. I'm sure we'll meet again. I can understand. I can understand that, um, Mr. Fab. Um, I, I did say like one of my big things about the Road to Gehenna DLC in the original game was like just the sheer amount of like wall of text that there was to read. Um, which why I appreciate in this game there's a lot more dialogue, so there's not as much to read, but there is still elements. But yeah, it's just not constant. Like reading like when I was playing Gehenna, I kind of felt like at times in a three hour stream I'd probably like solve like an hour's worth of puzzles but then be reading for two hours. So yeah, there there is a lot to read in this game, but I, I do find it is rewarding as well. I, I really enjoy kind of like how they've they bring in sort of like um texts and viewpoints which are so relevant to kind of like the world. That's the way I see it anyway, so, um, but yeah, no, I, I kind of completely see your viewpoint as well. Fun K, welcome back to the city. As you can tell, your discoveries have had quite the impact. I decided to take a stand. It started with our cats. Damien and I have had a lot of them over the decades, and I've watched every last one of them grow old and die. And that got me thinking about our responsibilities towards other life forms. What's life to most living creatures? Fear, hunger, pain, and in the end, death. Involuntary cessation of existence. That's horrifying, 1K, horrifying. And we are the only ones who can make it better. Yes. Carefully and slowly, but yes. That's what civilization is. That's what it's always been. Creating structures to lessen suffering. But this time we include everyone. We use our intelligence to get rid of as much of the horror of existence as we can for all living beings. Hard to achieve. So, 
Lots of necessary things are very difficult to do. We're the species that eradicated polio, went to the moon, created artificial intelligence. We need to start thinking bigger. Uh, technically, you're not though the species that did all those things, are you? You're just a remnant. You're a creation of that species. And as much as you guys are considering yourselves as humans, you're not technically the, the, the species that did that. Do that. It's more than most people do. But that might be changing. All right. See, I told you it was Athena who sent Prometheus. How do you know it was Athena? Because she's the one who built the giant pyramid? Sure. But how do you know it wasn't Cornelius who sent Prometheus? Because Cornelius was here? And where did Prometheus appear? Uh, come on. How do you know it wasn't Miranda? Maybe she got bored of waiting. I don't buy it. I think Athena is testing us. Why would she test us? To see if we can use those new technologies, like the uh, body replication. If those new technologies are such a big deal, why is she putting them in puzzles? Because play is how we learn. Maybe she's trying to tell us the opposite. That it's all just childish stuff that doesn't really matter. The last power failure almost caused a derailment. It all matters. You're starting to sound like Byron. You saw how that turned out. They'll find him. Sure. Sure. Interesting. A couple of old men having a heated discussion. Uh, uh, Alright, let's see if we can find anything else new over in this direction. Founder bless you, 1K. Now is the time of our great testing. The deceiver Byron has been slain, and we must turn away from the path of sin or suffer the same fate. need to. Do you see any of our ancestors walking around? No? Then the truth is obvious. Mother Nature punished them for their sins. Why would I want to side with those who wish to blacken the skies and kill the oceans? The tools of the sinner cannot be used to raise the sinner's palace. Never forget that, 1K. Okay. Strikes me as one of those people that just... Uh, her opinion is right, and whatever you say, you're not going to change it, so... Hello again, 1K. These are strange days we're living through, aren't they? It seems to me that we're slowly remembering the lessons Alexandra Drennan tried to teach us. Trying to actually live up to the legacy of our ancestors. Um. I'm sorry you see it that way. It's easy to turn away from Drennan's view of humanity. Hope requires hard work to maintain. She worked to the very last moment of her life to ensure that we had free will. I don't think she would tell us anything. I think it would make her very, very sad. The same thing she'd do with any technology. 
discover how it works and apply that knowledge for the common good. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Okay, we've got the... We're over here. Doesn't look like there is anything else over here, though, unfortunately. Oh, no, there is. There is a conversation to be had. Have to repet the cat, of course. One K, you're back. Let's not talk about me. Let's talk about that replication technology you found. You have to get hold of it, 1K. You have to. If you don't, I think I'm going to die of loneliness. And I think this whole city is going to slowly suffocate. I mean, do you really think the founder would have designed such a large city if she intended for us to stop at a thousand inhabitants? That's not even enough to fill a village. like a middle answer it's like who cares 1k who cares any amount of danger beats never meeting anyone new again I'm not sure that's the right uh, dance all right so I don't think there was anything back the other way like around the back there was a secret area that we found before good luck 1k Thank you. Um, I don't imagine that there's anything new around there. So let us go and see Cornelius. We're gonna have a look over here. Yep. Nothing new on the cat cams. It has something to do with your expedition. I must admit, I haven't been following the news. Sorry, been a little lost lately. Oh, that's... Uh, well, I suppose it shouldn't really come as a surprise. They were very close, you know. After she disappeared, he went away for a long time. On a research expedition, he said. To be honest, Everyone assumed he was working out his grief over being left behind. Many of the first companions were deeply shocked by her decision, particularly Byron. That's the thing. I wanted to talk to him about something, but he wasn't responding to my messages. So I came here to talk to him and he seems to have vanished. Hmm. No. The truth is that for the longest time, he barely left the museum. He was always at his terminal, working day and night. I asked him what he was doing once, and he said he was saving the past. No time for small talk, LB. We're going to get straight to the point. I did, on my way here. And I messaged most of his other friends. He doesn't seem to be anywhere in the city at all. I suppose so. It seems a little unethical, but then... 
It is just his work terminal, right? Good luck with everything, 1K. Purple. Dude, you're back from the island! I'm so glad you're okay, dude. Especially after what happened to Byron. Yeah, I come here all the time. He's a wise dude. I've asked him a lot of dumb questions and he's always taken the time to answer them. Lately, a lot of folks have been saying maybe that Byron dude is right after all. Like, maybe to really be excellent to each other, we have to build something new and bodacious. Don't know what will happen now that he's had that bogus accident. We're not dead, dude. Let's turn on side. I was kind of expecting a bit of a um, an overload, to be fair. Notes. Lab location inaccessible, deliberate, unclear. User profile, yes. Gold puzzles as barrier, yes. Hidden as self-protection, likely. External help for upload, yes. Ask Herman, no. Trust 1K, undecided. Applicable to Calvin, no. Applicable to Sarabaya. With Namina, yes. What does that mean? So this is what Cornelius was working on? Strange. It looks a bit like the blueprints for the Somnodrome, but no, it's not quite that. Is he trying to isolate something in the buffer? Maybe Melville can make sense of it, but I think this might be a dead end. I need to finish up with the mayor. You can head back to the VTOL whenever you're ready. I'll meet you there. No rush, though. My god. Someone kick Team Spin out with spoilers. Honestly. Right, so is there anything other than... So, did I find the thing you were talking about, Papyrus? And is there anything else I should find before I head off again? Around, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, if there's something to find, Papyrus, then there is something to find. One K, welcome back. Is it okay if I ask you something? Sure. Lately, I've been feeling kind of insecure, seeing the pictures of the megastructure that your team sent. I've started wondering whether the dome is kind of pointless. The dome was meant to contain us, contain our impact. That's what the founder intended, right? But did she? If she did, why would she build the megastructure? Mayor Hermanubis said the same thing. I didn't entirely believe it, but if you say so too, well, and you've seen the words. place, maybe that's what it is. Thanks for the chat. I hope you find Byron. That's why I don't always like having a conversation with these people because they're like, oh yeah, you said that, so that must be right, because I can't think for myself.
going to like your review, LB. Okay. Hello. Hi. The toilet. I haven't seen that before. Conversation there that we haven't had. Founder, bless you, friend. I wouldn't worry too much about any of it. The founder is an idea, a story we collectively tell ourselves. There is no truth for you to discover, and all these amazing technologies are really just more stories for us to believe. Or disbelieve. Myself, just to be sure, as you do. We looked at all those before, didn't we? Let's buy it again. Something over here. As if it's like the dialogue and stuff. I think I did all that the first time, didn't I? Is it here on the memorial papyrus or is it somewhere else?
This one that's um, cordoned off. Alright, no big thing. No worries. Go and make our way May the back founder be with you. To the island. We must listen to the wisdom of the ancient writers, or we will fail the founder's trial. The megastructure must be rejected. You are the founder's chosen, but you are in grave danger of going astray. Heed my words, 1K. If you fail this trial, a year from now, New Jerusalem will lie in ruins. I think he needs to turn the reverb down on his voice. Jeez. The truth is written in the books of our ancestors. In every one of them, the same story is told again and again that the pursuit of knowledge can only lead to death and grief. That is what all the great ancient visionaries foresaw. Listen to their warnings. Seek happiness in tranquility. And avoid ambition. Um... Yeah, surely there was, like, other strands of thought as well. Right? Misleading fantasies and daydreams of impossible futures. On the surface, perhaps, you can replace flesh and bone with wire and steel. But underneath it all... The human soul is as flawed as ever. You are mistaken. Things never truly change. All we can do is prevent our hubris from making things worse. Sir, you are a moron of the highest order. <laughs> you must. The future of New Jerusalem depends on your actions. Again, though, why is it... Why is it my actions? Why is it always me? I'm going to depend on, like, Byron's actions. Or... Mud's actions. This is always me. All the pressure. I'm literally like a, what, a few days old? And all this pressure is being piled on me. Insane. Oh, it's not like anybody else has got anything else to say. What can I do for you, 1K? sound very promising, of course. Apparently, it's possible to just magic things into existence yeah, now. That's, that's but true, what is the cost, 1K? There's always a cost. 
I agree. We can't just leave one of our most important citizens in that death trap. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. All right. What did the mayor say? I convinced him that we need to keep going until we found Byron. Did he want us to leave him behind? No, he's just concerned for our safety. And he's right to be. But we're going back anyway. Great trials lie ahead of you, my child. But your choices will determine the future. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, Albie. I was thinking, did Alcatraz get left behind on the island, or did he come back with us? Because, like, literally, there's only the two of us on that VTOL, which is very, very strange indeed. <laughs>